Good evening, good evening. It's Wednesday, it's nine o'clock. It's time for Night Time with Nelly. This is an over 18s show only. There is strong language and talk of a sexual nature throughout. And any advice I might be giving, please only use it for entertainment purposes. How are we all, Flower Pots? Good evening. Where are you watching me from? Give me a like. Give me a love and give me a share. Hello and good evening. So without further ado, let's address tonight's issues and topics. Yes, I've been and had my hair done. Had a wash and a blow. Okay, brilliant. But there's been a lot of chat on my Facebook saying that I have photoshopped this afternoon's photograph. Absolutely not. Let me show you. So, there's obviously different lighting in the bedroom as there was this afternoon, but can I just show you? That is me. That is actually me. That's my face. And I went on Instagram and I used the filter subtle and I went like that. Took a really good selfie. I know the angle not to get me 12 chins on and took a picture. So, that is me, your Auntie Nelly. Shall we turn the light off? Look, it's just me. It's only me. I've had a wash and blow and I will not apologise for it. Okay, so get your Photoshop, get your negative comments, get your not being kind and off your fuck because we don't accept nothing but kindness here tonight. Okay, so if you want to see me filtered, look, that's a really big filter. Look at me there. That's really filtered. Look, I've got like leaves on my head. And do you know what? That could have been like somebody's 17,000th time of taking a photo. And the 17,000th selfie might have been the one they felt comfortable with in posting. So why can't you just say, beautiful sweetheart, if you've got nothing nice to say, off you fuck. I will not apologise for looking like this at 46. I won't apologise that I went and had a wash and fucking blow. I cannot Photoshop my pictures. Can't filter them. Can't edit them. Can't do fuck all because I jump on here every day and I do reviews. And you've seen me in all sorts of weathers, in all sorts of states of undress. You've seen me with fucking roots. You've seen me when I was trying to go blonde. You've seen me when I knock my tooth out. You've seen me in bra and fucking knickers. Come on. Do you really think I can get away with being fucking photoshopped? Absolutely fucking lutely not. But if I want to go on bastard Instagram and use a filter called Subtle, I fucking will. And you have got fuck all to say about it. Is that all right, Karen? Did you hear me loud and clear, Karen? Good. Now, for the time being, I'm having a menopausal moment. So you may say, oh my God, Nelly, you're glowing. I'm actually sweating in places I didn't know I could fucking sweat. But without further ado, it's Wednesday night. We're here. It's night time with Nelly. And it's a bit of unadulterated, unfiltered fun. So let's get the messages up and see who's wrought into this week's night time with Nelly. Ooh, let's have a look. If you want to feature on Nighttime with Nelly, all problems are anonymous. Please keep writing into the page. And um, if it's the Nighttime with Nelly, if it's a Sunday service or you've got a review request, please keep writing into the page. So I've got that off my chest now. I've got it off my chest. But yeah, I posted this afternoon my advert saying I'm doing Nighttime with Nelly. I've got loads of hate in messages saying, why are you photoshopping your photos? That's not you. You don't look like that. Well, I do. I do look like that. I apologise, but that's my face. And after working in social media for three years, I'm really good at taking a selfie now and knowing my angles. Yeah. And if you want to know your angles and not put your 12 chins in, instead of put, taking a photo like that where you've got all your chins, or straight on, just tilt the phone up slightly and then normally see all that. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Enough about that. Good evening, everybody. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be watching me from, because I don't know where you're watching me from. So, let me know in the comments. Give me a like, give me a love, give me a share. Oh, now then, let's have a look. Someone called Red Hot 60. It's just, what? Where's Night 
that time in it. Oh, it's here. What my fucking hell am I reading now? Right. Are we ready? I am ready. All problems are anonymous. And like I said, all my answers off the cuff, because I don't know what I'm going to read until I go in, um, are for entertainment purposes only. So if the end of your cock is glowing, a luminous green, please see a general practitioner. If you smell like Fleetwood Docks, please see a general practitioner. Okay. Well, let's move on, shall we? And thank you for the lovely compliments on my hair. Yes, I am delighted to be back to dark. And I'm not going to go on much longer than this. However, how much has it grown? It were here in August. Fuck me. Dear Auntie Nelly, when me and my husband have sex, <coughs> it's incredible. I'm fucking undressing myself. No wonder it's over 18s. It's incredible. He is a fantastic lover and always has been. He can last all night. The problem is it only happens, I'm watching Hartley only because he's been sick earlier, so I keep my eye on him. It only happens every four months. Oh, heck. I've tried to be sexy. I've tried touching him and kissing him, but he turns over and says, night, night, beautiful. But when sex does happen, it's because he's decided. I have asked him if there is a problem and he said no, he's just not as highly sexed as me and it's about the quality, not the quantity and that people only have sex a lot the first year they are dating. We've been married three years now, so is that it? So she's been married for three years, she's in love with her husband, loves having sex with him when they have sex, it's absolutely incredible but it's all about Quan, quan, quality and not quantity, says her husband. So, is she's not really feeling like she's getting her needs met. So, you're not really being sexually satisfied. Now, your husband may not feel that you have got the same sex drive. And that's fine. That happens in loads of relationships. You know, we're all over the place. Uh, one's on a period. One might be pregnant. He's got work problems. You know, he's had a wank that afternoon. Don't fancy it tonight. Whatever it may be, we're not always on the same page. But if you're not getting your sexual needs met, are you actually being intimate with your husband? Because I also find that it's not all about the sex and the penetration. It's about having that intimacy between you both as a couple. So are you being actually intimate? Can't stop touching me about it. Don't look how shiny it is. Isn't it right, shiny? You don't get that with blonde. Anyway, moving on. So are you being intimate? You know, because a kiss and a cuddle, the fact that he'll sit up settee with you and watch a film and hold your hand, put his arm around you. And if you are feeling extremely sexual and he's not, why is he not like, why is he not like kissing you and comforting you and bit of foreplay? Maybe even making sure that you get that sexually gratifying orgasm rather than you having to do it yourself. So I would definitely delve into this a little bit further and have a chat with him and say, listen, I know that there is a honeymoon period in a relationship and I know that some people fuck all the time when they first get together and then it peters off, but I love you and I really fancy you. And when we have sex, it's incredible. So please, please, you know, even though you're not really feeling like you want to get hard on, please, 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 will you help me out? Because your your sex drive is slightly higher, you know, and you, you know, I mean, you could be really brutal and go off to the bathroom, leave bathroom door open um, and put, you know, your fucking vibrator inside you and start screaming and shouting. Um, Elaine Squires, honestly, I'm going to say this once now and I'm not going to say it again. Um, I am no longer engaged. That's why I've not got an engagement ring on. I called off my wedding. Apart from putting it in Times, New York Times, I don't know who else I have to tell, but I will not discuss it again. That's the end of it. So, yeah, so, you know, speak to your husband and just say you're going through a stage where you're feeling really sexually frustrated and is there anything he can do to help you? And just because... I mean, just because you're having sex every four months and it's only penetration, it doesn't mean to say that there's things that you can't do in between. You know what I mean? Because once you start petering off and it's only every four months, every six months, it starts breeding a little bit of resentment um, inside you. And it may even start with you start looking at other people. So do you know what I mean? 
Um, yeah, so I, I would certainly speak to your partner about it and just say that it's not all about sex, but you are feeling like you're not being sexually uh, fulfilled and see where you go from there. So moving on to the next Dear Antonelli of the evening. Dear Antonelli, it's my birthday. Happy birthday. No idea when this was sent in. So it could have been two years ago. I have been with my boyfriend for two months. He's 33 and I'm 28. We are gay men. It's his first relationship and it's going well, except for the bedroom. You see, he likes to penetrate me and I like to penetrate him. But we can't both penetrate each other. So one of us is usually left frustrated as we now take it in turns. It was never like this with my ex, as he was a bottom and loved me being a top. I don't know what to do, as we're both tops. What can we do? Hang on a minute. I'm all confused here. You both like to be penetrated. Why can't you, right, sit on floor, cross-legged, and use one of them double dildos? Why can't you, like get a double dildo up your ass going while you're both like wanking each other's cocks have you thought about that i think it's just logistically you've got to try and make this work if because it's not very sexy is it saying oh it's my turn tonight well it'll be your turn last time well i want it to be my turn that's not very sexy is it so why don't you introduce some sex toys for anal play but i do think if you get one of them double dildos and shove it up your asses while you're wanking, I think you'll have a right nice time. Yeah, I think that really is what can we do. Do that and see how you go on and write in and let me know. Dear Auntie Nelly, my boy wanted to try something different. I'm really fucking sweating me. I'm having a right menopausal moment, me. Oh, dear God in heaven. If you've never watched Nighttime with Nelly before, I don't often have one of these hot sweats but tonight fuck me pink jesus mm. and if you do have never watched night time with ellie before are you enjoying the show are you a first watcher let me know in the comments okie dokie i hope to god i'm not putting you off uh, but i do say at the beginning that i do actually um it, there is sexual talk throughout and strong language so dear auntie nelly okay so my boyfriend okay 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 my boyfriend wanted to try something different and now I don't know how I feel about it. I feel he is gay. One night I told him to put my panties on and I put my bright red stilettos on him and I used a big strap on and fucked him. <clears throat> it's after water shed, isn't it? It was incredible. We both enjoyed it. In fact, he enjoyed it so much, he went and bought some panties of his own to wear and surprised me by getting me a new strap on as I'd used the old one on past partners. She must, have been, she must be into pegging. Oh, hang on. I used to be big into pegging. And for anyone who's watching this and goes, I don't know what pegging is. Pegging is when a woman uses a strap on and penetrates her partner. That's pegging. I don't know where they get these fucking names from. I mean, pegging, pegging out means go and put it washing online. It's summer when it's a nice windy bright day. Anyway, she used to be into pegging. So he's been a bought her a new strap on, right? I think it's okay to spice things up now and then, yeah. But he now wants to fuck, he now wants me to fuck him all the time now. I'm not getting fucked at all. Because he is now saying he wants to call him a girl's name whilst fucking his ass, and he wants to suck on a dildo. That wasn't re. I hope, I hope it is a dildo, not a fucking vibrator. He'll end up with no fucking teeth in his head. This wasn't really my intention, and even though I don't mind, I don't know how this is going to go, and it's not look so, something I like to do anymore. I've been there, done that. How do I tell him this without upsetting him? Well. <clears throat> Right, so you used to be into pegging and you had a strap on and you thought one night in, in your little pearls of wisdom, you thought, I'll go and get him in a pair of panties and a pair of stilettos and I'm going to fuck him. And do you know what? You've opened Pandora's box because he's thought, fuck me, pink, that were well good. So it's something that you've done, 
but then you thought you'd no longer want it to do, but now it's something that you've tried to introduce again. So what were happening in your sex life that you thought, I want to spice it up a bit? And did you want to spice it to that fucking level? I mean, I don't mind a bit of a gel phrasey, but I don't want a fucking foul. Do you know what I mean? So you've got to be careful about what you do and what situations you get yourself into. And you've got yourself in a bit of a fucking pickle. So it's about sitting him down at kitchen table. So the first couple of evening, hashtag kitchen table, and just saying, listen, Flav, I wanted to spice things up a bit, thought it'd be a bit of fun, but off you fucking run to Anne Summers and fucking honey website, got yourself a big fucking strap on, want to put a pair of panties on, you want me to call you Sheila, and you want to fucking knock your teeth out with a vibrator, it's not what I'm about flower, been there, done that, don't do it for me, I don't mind it every once in a while, but I'm fucking you regular, and I'm not being fucking fucked, do you know what I mean? That's no fun. It's not very 50-50. So all she can do is actually explain to him exactly how you feel. Tell him. Just say, listen, I don't mind it every once in a fucking blue moon and I've got my own strap on now, just for me and you. Brilliant. We'll throw it to others away. I mean, I wouldn't have been right appreciative, really, if you'd have come at me with a strap on that had been as far as somebody else. I mean, who used that last Kenneth? I mean, who were Kenneth? Were Kenneth even clean? Anyway... But you have done this. You've got yourself in this situation. So the only way to get yourself out of the situation and be back to having a fulfilling, exciting, spiced up sexual relationship to what you believe is serving you is to communicate. Because you're not communicating. You've opened Pandora's box. You've shown him a whole new, different fucking life of sex. And he's fucking like a dog with two dicks and he wants it all the time because he's probably never had it. So get sat down at that kitchen table and explain it to him like I'm explaining it to you. There's only so much you can actually do in the bedroom to spice things up and you've got to have boundaries. So what you've got to say to him is, don't even know why I got the fucking strap on out of the cupboard because I didn't actually want to fuck you. I just thought I'd give it a go. You really like it, don't you? Do you think maybe we could do it on birthdays, Christmas and bar mitzvahs? And if not, and it's something that you want to now explore, then we're not on the same page sexually. Because once we start doing things in the bedroom that we don't agree with or we're having to do as a chore, it's not consensual, it's not fun, it's not where we want to be. And sex should be consensual and it should be fun and it should be everything and a bag of fucking chips. But you're fucking him every night with a strap on. He's fucking chewing on a vibrator. You know, he's got your fucking stilettos on. I mean, has he fucking stretched them? That's what I'd be asking. Get me fucking shoes off and buy your own. Panties are cheap compared to stilettos. But yeah, you've, you know, he is. He's running right ice now like a dog with two dicks in there. And you've only got yourself to blame. So have that conversation. And I always say, <coughs> couples, not COVID. It's not COVID. I'm just a bit warm. Um, <clears throat> couples should be having that conversation, you know, and don't be thinking just because you fucks her on Tuesday and she come and you fuck her again like that on Thursday, it'll happen again. You know, it's all about the variety, spicing up our sex life. It's all about the foreplay and the intimacy, you know, that little cheeky text on a Tuesday afternoon, whatever it may be. But couples need to certainly keep communicating, not just about... Are we getting front room decorated? What we're watching on Saturday? Are we having a takeaway on Friday? But we certainly need to certainly communicate about our likes and needs in the bedroom. And for couples who've been together for just that little bit longer, things change. We change. Bodies change. What we like change. What we dislike change. We might have watched porn up and thought, oh, I wouldn't mind giving that a try. Do you know what I mean? So communicate communication is massive in all areas of a relationship and don't be shy don't be shy people have been fucking for fucking centuries and fucking centuries hmm? moving on <clears throat> dear auntie nelly my boyfriend is so so kind to me he is so romantic and turns up unexpected oh he loves me cherishes me he really has never stopped wooing me Oh, nobody likes a fucking show off, all right. Moving on. However, oh God, there's a problem. It's the sex he does all the right things. He's so good at kissing and fingering. But when we do full sex, he can't make me come. I have to go to the bathroom to finish myself off, which doesn't take long. I just, 
I just hump the sink. I want to know how can I come when he is in me. This is the only thing wrong in our relationship. Please help me, Antonelli. What would you do? Well, I'd be getting a sponsorship with fucking army to shanks if you keep fucking off to the bathroom and humping fucking sink. Christ on a bike. I've never heard about folk running off to the bathroom and humping fucking white goods, let's call them. Right, so... You're having sex with your boyfriend. When he's fingering you, you come. When he's kissing you, you come. Foreplay, it's fine. It's the actual penetration. I think that you're struggling to actually have um, an orgasm with your boyfriend because you're all into um, clitoral stimulation. And maybe when he's penetrating you, you're not getting any clitoral stimulation. So have you thought about actually... I can't do lots of hand gestures on Facebook when I'm doing this because they'll ban me. Do you remember when I did that and I got done? Um, anyway, moving on. Um, so have you thought about maybe stimulating your own clitoris whilst he's penetrating you? Have you thought about him wearing a cock ring, one of them vibrating ones that will stimulate your clitoris while he's penetrating you? Have you thought about maybe having some sort of something there that's humping away on your clitoris? while he's penetrating you and that way you can maybe achieve orgasm that way do not be disheartened that you don't actually um orgasm while being penetrated because many women don't and uh, that's what i always find foreplay is you know let's do lots and lots of foreplay so i get my bits in and then when you get your bits in and you know two pumps and a fucking squirt at least i won't feel so bad sleeping in wet patch because at least i've had a bit of fun so if it, it, it's all about knowing your body knowing what works for you and don't be shy telling your partner if it's a case of i can only come when my clit's being sucked like whatever then tell him then tell him and that that is what you have to introduce in the bedroom but it sounds to me like you're just letting him jump on do his bits and maybe if he fingers you that's nice but if he doesn't finger you you know you're not going to come and then when he's finished and he's laid there having a fag you're fucking in bathroom fucking on pink sink you know what i mean so once again communicate let your partner know what you like it's okay masturbate in front of your partner so they get to see how you like the movement on your vagina, on your body, how you like to stimulate yourself, what fingers do you use, do you use fingers, do you not, you know, let's not be using bathroom sinks, hmm, I think I'm going to do a sneeze, wait a minute, <coughs> oh, oh, thank God for tenor lady, that's all I have to say there, <laughs> Hmm. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have a disgusting problem. Oh, dear God, please do not let it involve. Oh, dear. Let's just go. Okay. And when I'm not horny, when, no, I have a disgusting problem. And when I'm not horny to think about it, it makes me feel sick and I hate myself. But when horny, I can't get enough of it. Oh, when having sex with people, protected, you'll be happy to know. I ejaculate, I can't ejaculate unless they shove things up my bum. Not just anything, but fingers, dildos, tongues, <laughs> three-piece sweets. No, I, I, he didn't say three-piece sweets, I said that. I love it. I love the feeling of fullness and sometimes, not often, I keep poozing for ages until my stomach hurts as it really gets me hard. I then go to the toilet and wank myself until I can't wait anymore. And while sitting and pooing, I spunk loads and loads. Have I got a shit fetish? Is this normal? It's getting an every other day thing. Please tell me I'm normal. It is absolutely normal to have a shit wank. That's the only thing I can say. Am I normal? Absolutely. I wouldn't hold your shits in until your stomach's hurting and you feel ill because you could pass out or throw up. But the fact that you're sitting on a toilet and you're actually <clears throat> expelling your excrement and that's giving you a hard on and you're having a wank, it's called a shit wank. It's quite normal. It's fine. It's not my idea of fun, but it's whatever gets you off. Now, as long as you're not harming anybody, it's not, um, you know, you're not wanking and shitting in front of kids or animals, I can't really fucking give a shit, I couldn't give a shit that you love shit wanking, you crack on, it's absolutely fine, and I think when we're watching porn, 
um, it's quite important to point this out. We, we can be watching porn. So let's say, I mean, everybody knows I watch porn. I'm, I'm not shy about it. I watch porn and what? So it's about as interesting as what, what the weather's going to be tomorrow. You watch your porn and you do what you've got to do um, to get to where you want to be. So I can watch porn for about, I don't know, I'll spend maybe... 20 minutes looking for a certain subject, a certain genre, a certain video. I find the one I want, put it on, and we in 11 seconds squirt it all over my hand. So, do you know what I mean? If I actually think about what it was that I was watching, I mean, I won't be able to tell you and I won't be able to remember. I wouldn't. Um, just only because um, it, it's been undone. Do you know what I mean? I can't even tell you what they look like. I'm fucking sweating. I'm really sweating. Fucking menopausal moment here. Well bad. So I won't be able to tell you exactly what I watched. But if I had to think about certain things that I'm trying to look for or watch at that point at that moment. Yeah, I feel a bit disgusted in myself and think, oh, dear God, Nell, uh, where do we go from here? So don't think about it. Once you've actually expelled and you've ejaculated and you've washed your hands and you've wiped your bottom and you've used a wet wipe and you've flushed the toilet and you've cleared the bathroom, don't worry about it. As long as it's been a thing you've wanted to do, you've done it, you've not involved anybody else, you know, you're not trying to push anybody else on it. There's no kids, there's no animals, you've not got yourself in A&E because your stomach aches that bad. You know, it's absolutely fine. So your question was, sorry, I've gone off on a fucking tangent. Please tell me I'm normal. It is absolutely fine to enjoy a shit wank. So you crack on, flower. Dear Auntie Nelly, me and my girlfriend have an awesome sex life. Tell you what, this room has not seen any fucking action. My vagina has not seen any action. Boris Johnson has said now that I can't have people in my home that I don't live with and have sex with. That means I'm going to fucking heal up. But do you really think I'm going to listen to somebody who brushes his hair with a fucking balloon? Off you fuck, Boris. Me and my girlfriend have an awesome sex life. There isn't much she won't do, but recently we had a shower together on holiday. And they had a double shower. Anyway, we had incredible sex. Mm. And she always rubs her clit whilst I fuck her because that's how she comes. But when we got home and now we are home in quarantine, she said the next time we do it in our shower, she wants me to piss on her clit because she really likes that. I have never done that. And now I don't know what to think. Does this mean that she has done it before? I wish she'd never said. What do I do? Because she's expecting me to piss on her and I don't know if I can. So this couple's been somewhere like fucking Portugal or Greece or Turkey or Italy or wherever. We, you come home to the UK now, you've got a fucking quarantine. Spend a lot of time together. And she wants him to piss on her in the shower. And he's thinking, I don't want to. So this takes us back to, if we ever have to do anything sexually that we don't want to do then it's not consensual if it's not consensual then it's a crime okay number one number two sometimes our partner may ask us to do something that we might think shit i'm not sure about that i mean oh god i mean if it's fisting it's a straight up no from me do you know what i mean but if it's something you're not quite sure why you're not quite sure is it a complete no is it I'm not sure whether I can. I'm not sure how I'll perform. I don't know how it's done. You know, speak to your partner about it. But the fact that you're thinking now, I wish she'd never said because she said she likes it. Does that mean it's been done before? Unless she's a vestal virgin and you've met her and you're her first, then yeah, there's chances are that she may have had sex before you and she may have been pissed on before. She may have even been shit on. She may have even fucking been fisted. Whatever happened before you is before you and is none of your fucking business. So stop thinking about what she's done before and appreciate the fact that you've got such an open relationship with your partner that she feels comfortable enough to ask you for these things, tell your likes, tell your wants, tell your desires. You've been on holiday together, you're now quarantined together, I'm presuming you may live together, so you've taken that step. 
So communicate these things while you're in quarantine and let her know what you feel comfortable with and let her know what you don't. And if it's something that you're just a little bit like, I'm not sure because I might piss in her face instead of where she wants, ask her and then give it a go. And don't forget, please, sex is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to have a laugh from it. You know, it's not going to be like Pornhub and it's not going to be like a fucking Hollywood romantic blockbuster. It's a bit of fun and it's exciting and it's nice and it can be passionate and sexy and hot and horny, but it can also be fucking hilarious. Do you know what I mean? He could pull out and she could do a massive fanny fart. Enjoy it, but discuss it and don't ever do anything that you feel uncomfortable with. Like fisting. Moving on. Dear Antonelli, this is my first time writing in. Oh, no then. Here we go, I'm going to have to have some water. Christ on a bike. After this, I'm going to have to have a, um, a cold shower because... Um, whew. Whew. This first time I'm writing in, I don't actually know if I want help or just someone to listen to me. Oh, God love you. I will never understand, but I'm 48... And I've recently started dating a guy who is 50. We are both divorcees. Oh, and at that moment, it's all working fine. Everything is going well. The problem or the weird bit or the bit I'm not sure about, and that's why I need somebody to talk to. When we have been sexual, he likes to suck on one of my nipples. And he says, milk me, which means I have to wank him while he sucks. I don't really know what is going on. But I do it, but I'm not really sure if this is normal. He says it's normal, but I think it's weird. But do you think if I consent to this and continue to do it, then it means he could start introducing other sexual things? I've only slept with three people, so I guess I'm a bit naive. We've got hecklers under the bedroom window, so if you can hear them, I do apologise. Um, we haven't had hecklers for quite some time, but we've got hecklers now under the my bedroom window who were watching me live and um, shouting up milk me mommy so if you heard that I apologize okie dokie um, <laughs> um it's it's I'm not gonna say it's not normal and I'm not gonna say it's weird it's just his fetish so he's obviously got a little kink a little fetish it's not normal, no, it's not vanilla sex, okay? It is a fetish or a kink, whichever way you want to look at it. If we start allowing these things in our sex life to become normal, then, yeah, maybe he will push the boundaries and go to the next level and to the next level. Where do you want that to go? You've only ever been with three men. You've only ever been with 333 men. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. And if that's not your comfort zone, it's pushing you out your comfort zone, then you need to make that clear because it's not making you feel very sexual, very attractive, very desired. You're just doing it to do it. So tell him and say, listen, I know you said it's not weird, but it feels a bit weird to me. So I'd prefer it if we didn't do it. But if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I don't want to do it. So you're going to have to find somebody else. And you're just going to have to be honest and open with him about it. And you've every right to say that. Everybody has every right to say no. No matter how long you've been together, no matter how many sexual partners we've had. And it's all right sometimes trying things out and halfway through saying, thought might, you know, give it a go, but no, it's not for me. Can we stop? Can we have a safe word? Whatever it may be. So no, I am so sorry, but I'm not going to say it's normal. I'm not going to say it's weird. I'm just going to say that for him does it for him but it doesn't for you and if it feels weird then it probably is weird so always go where you got feeling and do say to him if that's something you need in order to enjoy sex i'm not the lady for you and there are plenty of people out there you know divorcees widows whatever people who have not you know had lots of sexual partners who just want vanilla sex and there's nothing wrong with vanilla sex absolutely nothing wrong with bit of a kiss and a cuddle, bit of a grot, bit of a foreplay, bit of penetration, bit of ejaculation, bit of an orgasm, bit of a kiss and a cuddle, a bit of turn it light off and going to sleep. Fuck all wrong with that. And you will find that if that's your bag. Okay. But if, you know, don't let it continue because he will push the boundaries. 
Dear Auntie Nelly, so my girlfriend's vagina is very, very sort of big and baggy. Oh, when we have sex, I can't really feel anything. My penis tends to feel unusual and I can't feel my penis inside her. She just feels really wet, so my penis tends to slide in and out fairly easily and I'm not sure if this is the issue. When we first had sex, it was much better. I could feel things, but now I can't. The lack of tightness is a whole different issue, but no matter what, it's not a deal breaker because I love her, but I'm just looking for a practical solution. What? She's got a sort of big, big baggy fanny. That's what he's put. And she's wet. He sticks his penis in and he can't feel like. Is it because she's really wet? Sometimes when you get really, 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 really wet, um, and this, it's almost like a fucking tsunami, you can't feel anything because it's that um, engorged and that excited. So you might have to like, I don't know, get a, get a, get a face cloth and like wipe it out before you go in. Think yourself lucky that she's getting wet. I mean, some girls don't get wet for the partners at all and you've got to fucking spit on it. I mean, I don't know. Is it a medical problem? I haven't got a practical solution to this. If she's too wet and you're going in because you can't feel it because she's too wet, then fucking dry it off. If it's not that, then I don't know. Go and see a doctor. Have a chat with her and just say, can you feel me? I mean, I, you know, you're saying you can't feel yourself inside her. I mean, how big's your dick? Have you got a dick? Do you know what I mean? Is this a size? Are you thinking she's got a baggy fanny when actually you've got a fucking chipolata? Not quite sure on this one. I'm not often get stumped, but right. So next time she gets so wet, before you go in, dry her off a bit. Go in and see what you can feel. If you go in and you still can't feel out, have you got a sensation problem in your knob? Can she feel out? You know, is she still having a nice time and it's just your problem and she ain't got a fucking clue? You know, communication. But next time you're there and you're about to go in, give it a bit of a dry and then dust in and just see what happens. That's my practical fucking solution. Jesus Christ. I mean, can you imagine? Poor girl's laid down. She's like, are you in yet? He's like, oh, in. Uh, I've, I've, I've come. I've finished. <clears throat> I might have missed the show, Auntie Nelly, where this one was read out. But just a quick question for night time with Nelly. When you finish night time with Nelly, do you wank over all the problems? I do. <laughs> no. The answer to that is um, no. I actually can honestly, hand on heart, say that when I finish night time with Nelly and I go off then, put my tripod back, share things to me other uh, platforms, and then go away, settle down and read the comments. I don't think, hmm, thinking about him having a shit wank, I'm getting really horny, so I'm going to have to have a wank. No, I can honestly, hand on heart, say I have never finished a night time with Nelly and wanted a wank. Okay. If you do, then that's fine. That's serving a purpose and you fucking crack on and crack one out, flower, for your auntie Nelly. Not a fucking problem. But me, the question was, do I? No, I don't. No. It's not happened up to now. We can never say never, can we? But um, no, I've never actually sat here that wet where I thought, I can't wait to finish show because I'm going to have to go and finger fuck myself. No. Okay, and that's been tonight's night time with Nelly. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have because I've really enjoyed tonight. Um, please keep sending me your dear Auntie Nellies, whether it's night time with Nelly or a Sunday service. They are completely anonymous. I don't know what I'm going to read until we read them out. That's the fun of the show. All answers are purely for entertainment purposes. Once again, if your knob's luminous green, go and see the doctor. If you smell like Fleetwood dogs, have a, uh, have a fucking wash and go and see the doctor. You know, please, it's for entertainment purposes. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have. Give me a like, give me a love, give me a share, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, flower pops.